In this lab, we're going to look at clath rates and some other things that in which size and shape are important. Up until now, pretty much all the chemistry that we've looked at has been where the functional group is the key thing to understanding what happens to the molecule. With clath rates and molecular sieves and several other things, uh, we're going to find that it's really the size and shape that is key to understanding why the phenomenon occurs. A clath ray comes from the uh, Greek word bar, and this is because in a clath ray you have molecules that join together, usually by hydrogen bonding, to form a cage so it holds another molecule inside. So a clathrate hydrate is a clathrate that is formed by water that hydrogen bounds out around that molecule, forming that cage. The first time we discovered them was long ago, but we really didn't understand them until the early 1900s, and we found that there were these crystals clogging pipelines when they were transporting gas in cold climates, and they would clog up the pipeline. So uh, they investigated them and found that they were, uh, if it was natural gas, it was methane surrounded by water. We also have seen them in the deep sea drilling that when they drill for these, that they'll bring up these large crystals, clear crystals, that when they fall on the deck, they uh, bounce around and evaporate and leave a puddle of water. And uh, so that, that's some, some, another place where we found them. Uh, methane clathrates, uh, they believe, are the reason that the capping of the Deep Horizon well that uh, exploded and uh, caused such a huge oil spill in the Gulf uh, about a decade ago, that that was what prevented their effort to cap the well and recover the oil instead of letting it leak out because they constructed this concrete cap with a hole in the top to which a pipe was attached. But as soon as the, the uh, gas started flowing into the pipe, methane clathrates formed and clogged it up so that it wouldn't work. Clathrate hydrates can be more than with just methane. There's, here's a list of a number of molecules that can do it. What's different amongst them is the number of water molecules because the size of the molecules di uh, differ. Notice even nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide will all form clathrate hydrates. We think that they form by the molecule sitting in cold, highly pressurized water, and the water molecules uh, start hydrogen bonding and forming a cage around the molecule, although there's some that are found that are empty, and so they think it's a possibility they might form, and then the uh, guest molecule move in, but um, that's it's probably that the gas molecule was there and then it moved out after formation. Most clathrates, at least clathrate, uh, clathrate hydrates, are unstable at room temperature and atmospheric pressure. The conditions for them to form require that the water has to have fewer hydrogen bonds, which is a higher energy situation, and then to have water organized around the other molecule is more ordered, and that's uh, you know a loss of entropy to have something more ordered, and it makes it less likely. It only occurs under these high pressure, cold temperature situations. Also, when you put the gas inside, that isolates the gas, and that's really, really ordered. Uh, the instability is due to entropy, it is not due to an endothermic reaction. Biochemists actually use clathrates in explaining how certain biomolecules make it through your bloodstream when they're not water-soluble. 
and uh, clathrate hydrates, uh, they have found that they cannot be too large, that you can't have more than five uh, water molecules around the outside, and um, that doesn't seem to happen with proteins or nucleic acid hydration. So there, it's very possible this is not happening. Now, urea is known to form clathrates just like water. So if we take urea and hydrocarbons or urea and sodium nitrate, we can form a clathrate around those uh, different substances. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to form a urea and hydrocarbon hydra, uh, clathrate. Clathrates are being investigated for a number of things. Uh, Semi-metal clathrates, they look like they might uh, help in semiconductor research. Uh, you can use them to isolate impurities at times from water. And hydrogen gas uh, can be stored as a solid in a clathrate hydrate. But um, it, none of this has been found energetically, uh, economically, so at present it's still just experimental. Molecular sieves ha operate on something uh, very similar to what clathrates are. Clathrate, the molecule size, is very important so that it can form a crystal structure around it. With molecular sieves, we have these crystalline zeolites that can be made and they have little holes in them and those holes are just the right size for a particular molecule so when they create them some of them have holes that are just the right size for water others might have just the right size for nitrogen etc and so what we uh, are able to do is get these zeolites and uh, they usually find them in little balls. Uh, I have some in the lab that I use to keep the uh, infrared spectrometer dry. Uh, and the, each particular type of molecular sieve is designed to absorb a particular molecule. And so you can purify gases and other things by just using molecular sieves. Whether or not a, um, a molecule or an ion actually moves into the hole in the sieve depends on what its size is and what size is in the particular molecular sieve. So each molecular sieve has a cavity size difference and it's all based on the composition of the zeolite. So as a result, it's highly selective. Uh, what do you use it for? You can use it for exchanging ions, let's say taking protons out and replacing it with something else, or taking sodium out and replacing it with protons. Um, that's often done with uh, water softeners. There's uh, two different ways of softening water, but that's a major way. Um, you can use it to remove odors and you can use it to purify gases, and they can even be used as catalysts. I uh, use them for the most common use, which is absorbing water from air, and what you do is you use it, and when it becomes saturated with water, then you put it in the oven and you heat it to cause the water molecules to be dispelled from it, and then it's reusable.